In this example, I have sine, sine squared of x plus cosine of x. Now, automatically, what I would want to do for this is try to see if I could factor. Unfortunately, sine and cosine do not have the same common terms. So I can't factor anything out. I can't solve for it. Because what, which x are you going to solve for? Right? Because then you're going to have a solution with the x. Right? Think of that as like x squared plus y, you know, plus y. You, got, you, you can't simplify it like that. So one thing I do notice, though, is I have a squared term. And whenever I have a squared term, I always want to think of applying my trig, uh, Pythagorean identities. Right? So sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if I want to replace sine, try to replace them in terms of their same, same trig function. right? So therefore, I can rewrite sine squared as cosine squared of x. So therefore, I can write sine squared of x equals 1 minus cosine squared of x. So now I'm going to plug this in for sine. OK? Yes? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So I subtracted cosine on both sides. Huh? We are. That's the Pythagorean identity on page 354. I use that Pythagorean identity to rewrite what sine squared equals. So now I know it's sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. So I'm substituting in sine squared by applying my Pythagorean identity. All right? So now I have negative cosine squared of x plus cosine of x plus 1 equals 1. All right? Now, in this case, I don't really want to factor with a negative 1. So what I'm going to do is I'll factor that out. Um, I factor out the negative 1. And then I can divide by negative 1. So now I have cosine squared of x minus cosine of x minus 1 equals negative 1. Huh? I did. I factored out the negative 1. You could divide both sides by negative 1. It's the same thing. But I factored it out so I could divide it. Why is it what? I took the negative and I factored it out. So that becomes now positive. That becomes negative. That becomes negative. Huh? Then I divide by negative 1. So that's a negative. That negative 1 I factored out, I divided it by negative 1. So then that remains the same because that's the product of those two. Huh? It was always negative 1. Yes. So we don't throw things at people. That hurts them. Because that's a positive 1. Yeah, I just rewrote it. All right, so now, oh, this is. OK. Sorry? You guys, if you just want to divide everything by negative 1, that's fine. Here, watch. Just divide everything by negative 1. It's the same thing. Same thing. I just factored it out and then divided it. Fine. Divide everything by negative 1. That becomes positive. That now becomes negative. That now becomes negative. So we're left with cosine squared of x minus cosine of x minus 1 equals negative 1. The exact same operation. Okay? No, we haven't solved for x yet. Right? So now, remember, we look at this and we say, all right, how am I going to solve for x? I have two x's, one squared, one's regular. So to do this, I need to look into factoring. The only way I'm going to be able to do factoring is if I set it equal to 0. So to do that, I add the 1 on both sides. Now I'm left with cosine squared of x minus cosine of x equals 0. Now 
I have it set equal to 0. Now I can apply factoring. So to do that, I factor out a cosine. So I factor out a cosine. I'm left with cosine. I'm sorry. Now I'm left with cosine of x times cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. OK, Caroline? Now, since I have the product equal to 0, I can now say that the cosine of x equals 0 and the cosine of x equals cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. OK? Everybody understand? OK. So now we need to go back to our unit circle and determine when does cosine equal negative 1. OK. Yes. Oh, it is. I'm sorry. So when does cosine of x equal 1, right? Yes? OK. So when does cosine of x equal 1? Well, obviously, Maggie, the first couple points that we learned was 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1, right? So when is my x coordinate equal 1? When is x coordinate equal 1? x coordinate equals 1 at, um, at uh, cosine of x equals 1 at 0 or at you know, 2 pi, or the angle is 2 pi. All right? um, however, we also look at this. So we have our angle. Now, it all kind of depends on what our constraint is. And actually, on this problem, uh, the constraint is just to find all the values. So I just need to find all the values for that. Then the other one is my other angle is cosine of 0. So when does cosine equal 0? Well, cosine equals 0 at that angle and that angle. Well, that's pi halves, and that's 3 pi halves. OK? All right. So if I was going to go ahead and uh, find my angles, um, I could write in there, so since there's no constraints, I can say that theta has to equal 0, right? But then plus 2 pi r. So I could say theta equals 0 plus 2 pi r. Well, obviously, 0 plus 2 pi r is just going to be 2 pi r. Then I go and look at when does theta equal 1. Well, theta is going to equal 1 at pi halves. But then I can just add pi to get to 3 pi halves, right? And then I can just add pi again. So theta, in this case, is going to equal pi halves plus pi r. Because the distance from one solution to the next solution is only pi. So I can just add pi to those two. OK? Cool? So those would be your two, that would be your two solutions that make that true. Yes? I'm sorry? Well, that's where cosine is equal to 0, right? So cosine is only equal to 0. Um, cosine is only equal to 0 at pi halves and at this angle, 3 pi halves. But the distance between pi halves, so what you could do, you could have done pi halves plus 2 pi r. And theta equals 3 pi halves plus 2 pi r. But why keep on adding circles to that and adding circles to this? Because the distance from here to here is pi. Then add pi again takes me there. Pi again takes me there. So if I just add pi to my one solution, it's going to give me both those solutions. Yes, Mackenzie? That is when my cosine of x is equal to 0. Because if you look at that, that's when the x coordinate is equal to 0. So cosine x coordinate is equal to 0 at that angle, which is pi halves. And then the next time cosine is equal to 0 is at 3 pi halves. And the distance between pi halves and 3 pi halves 
is pi. So I can just add pi to get to the next solution, and then add pi again to get to the next solution. Okay? The difference for this one, here's my angle, my cosine of, cosine of x equals 1 at 0. But the next time it equals 0 is when I add 2 pi to it again. Okay? So that's why those two are kind of different. Okay? And again, if your solution set, it would be a little bit different, guys, if your solution set was.